Boys and girls, today we're going to start a new unit in social studies. It's unit two. It's the United States' land and people. And I want you to get the idea that you need to understand how people meet their needs. If you're following along in your social studies, today's lesson, lesson one of unit two, starts on page 70. And it's called From Sea to Sea. What I want you to realize is that the United States is over 3,000 miles from coast to coast. It's a really wide country. Um, and in that country, there's a lot of things happening. And today I want you to realize, I want you to identify four things. First of all, I want you to uh, realize that the United States has a wide variety of landforms and waterways and resources. Second, we're going to divide the country in half. We'll talk about the eastern part of the United States, which has to do with the coastal plains, the Appalachian Mountains, and the interior plains. Third, we're going to go to the western part of the United States, which includes Alaska and Hawaii, and its landforms that include the Rocky Mountains, uh, plateaus and basins, some hot, dry areas. And then fourth, what I really want you to see is that the United States as a whole has a lot of habitats and ecosystems. Since it's so big and, and changing from place to place, it really supports a lot of, of different climates. All of these different things, uh, including five vocabularies that we'll talk about today, mineral, erosion, tributary plateau, and basin, all of this contributes to one central idea. And the big essential question is, what is the geography of the United States? Our lesson today is a lot of geography, so stick with me. If I took a look at the United States, what you'd see is that it's a varied land. If I take a look at uh, you know, Alaska, it has the distinction of two notable things. It is the highest place in the United States in elevation, and that's at Denali, uh, another term that we give to Mount McKinley, which is the tallest elevation in the United States, and it is at 20,320 feet above sea level. And also, Alaska has the distinction of being the coldest place on Earth, uh, in Prospect Creek, Alaska, which is generally uh, gets as cold as negative 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Likewise, on the western coast, it has uh, another area called Death Valley, which is in California. It gets the distinction of two uh, facts about it. First of all, it is the lowest place in the United States. It is at 282 feet below the level of the sea. Um, it is also the distinction of being the hottest place in the United States where temperatures can easily reach 134.7 degrees Fahrenheit. One other geographic place I want to show you or talk about is in Crater Lake, Oregon, which is also on the western part of the United States. And it is the deepest place in our country. It, uh, the depth of the lake is 1,932 feet deep, so very deep. What I'm telling you is a lot of different, uh, the United States is made up of, of lots and lots of landforms. If I take a look at landforms, they include things such as mountains, deserts, uh, valleys, plains, swamps, forests, rivers, lakes. All of these different things make up the geography of the United States. Likewise, we have many natural resources. And if you ask what a resource is, a resource is something that we need in order to survive. These are things like food and water and building materials. These things in which we need to have in order for us to survive. Um, and those are things like farmland is a natural resource. We use that to create food. Uh, forests, we use to help uh, get building materials like lumber. Coal and oil. Um, also, another natural resource that we need to talk about is minerals. Now, minerals are things um, that we find in nature. Generally, they're mined. Uh, these are things like coal and iron and copper and gold and um, silver. There are resources that we can we can dig up from the earth in order to use them. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the eastern half of the United States. If I were to take the United States, split it down the middle, I want to just talk about the eastern part. Now the eastern part of the United States begins along the coast. And the coast is flat, it's low, it's a long area, and this is an area where you see a lot of beaches um, and sand and waves crashing on the land. Um, that's the coast. And we call that a coastal plain. A plain is just a, a flat area. Um, so we call that the coastal plain. Beyond the coastal plain, we have our first mountain range in the United States, and that's the Appalachian Mountains. The Appalachians are a very old mountain range um, that have been eroded uh, or, or um, uh, worn down by wind and ice and water through a process called erosion. Uh, and that's been happening for millions of years. Beyond the Appalachians, we have an area called the Interior Plain. So here we get a map. We can see the Atlantic Coastal Plain. We see the Appalachian Mountains with their peaks. And then we get another plain behind it. And that's called the Interior Plain. This part of the United States is low. It's got very rich soil. Um, and a lot of things can be grown there, so it's good farmland. Also in this area, we have the Great Lakes. The Great Lakes, five of them, um, they were formed from glaciers melting millions of years ago. Uh, and then the western part, or the eastern, I'm sorry, the eastern part of the United States really goes up into the Mississippi River. The Mississippi River is our country's longest river. It's been used for transportation uh, for thousands of years because if you see it goes to the Gulf of Mexico, it can get into the Atlantic Ocean, and you can travel through the Mississippi to get clear up into the United States. Now Mississippi includes, uh, or, the, or the eastern part includes the Mississippi and all of its tributaries. A tributary is just another word for smaller rivers. So if I take a look at the Mississippi, I see that the Ohio River connects to it and it's one of its tributaries. I see that the Missouri River connects to it and it's considered one of its tributaries. Now, as I move on from the Mississippi, I get to another section called the Great Plains. This is an area in which we live. Um, what it means is that as I go from the interior plains across the Mississippi, the land starts going upward. And we call that area the Great Plains. So it's not quite the interior plains, it's similar, but it's going upward. It has less trees. It's really great for growing uh, farm and using it as farmland to grow food. It's also great for cattle uh, because there are no trees and, and things to get in the way. It's wide open spaces. This takes us to the western part of the United States. As I go through the western part of the United States, including the Great Plains, after we get there, we go to the Rocky Mountains. The Rocky Mountains um, are really big peaks. They extend the height of the United States. And as you go to the top of the peaks of the Rocky Mountains, we get to this section called the Continental Divide. The Continental Divide is the topmost part of the Rocky Mountains. And what it is is as water goes down the Rocky Mountains, it either goes westward toward the Pacific Ocean or it goes eastward toward the Atlantic Ocean. So as water comes down, it has to decide which way it's going. Uh, and so it, it in fact divides the, the water either goes east or west. As we come down from the Rocky Mountains, we get to high areas called plateaus. And, um, what a plateau is, is a high flat area that rises steeply from the land around it. So it, it all comes up and it's flat on the top. There are those, but there's also basins. Basins are a low land form shaped like a bowl surrounded by higher land. So we have these plateaus, which are flat on top, that have just kind of come up. It kind of looks like a, a large hill or almost a mountain that's just been cut off and it's flat. And it's all coming up from the ground. But we also have these bowl-shaped basins.